I've been playing around with a few of the AI 3D model generators that do text prompt modeling, and I thought it'd be fun to do a side-by-side -side showdown to see how they stack up against each other. A few of the AI tools out there claim to be able to do 3D models, but when you really dig in and see what they can accomplish, the only thing they really do is create images that look like 3D renders, so not really quite telling the truth. For this comparison, I'm going to use three text prompts to generate sea creatures in two different text prompts to 3D model generators. We'll look at LumaLab's Genie and Meshi AI. Let's get to it. I'll be using Meshi's text to 3D generator, and I've got three prompts designed that I'll use in each of the two different softwares. We're going to start off with a crayfish. So I've got a light blue crayfish with a bright orange claws and tail. And I'm not going to put any negative prompts. We'll keep it on realistic and go ahead and generate. Okay, so Meshi has generated our first previews. And let's take a look and see what we get. So this looks pretty crawfish-like. It looks like a crawfish that got in a fight and lost one of its claws. This one has both of them and some strange additional appendages, but actually looks pretty nice. Not absolutely accurate, but it looks like a crawfish at least. That looks like a blob. And this one looks like it took the crawfish claws from the other one and stuck it on itself, or it's just carrying them around as like a prize weapon. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna hit refine and see what we get. So I'll say, go to my settings here, I'll hit refine on uh, high and refine. So Meshi's just finished the refined version and let's take a look. And off the bat, I think this looks interesting. I don't know if it's accurate. I think, well, I know that it's not accurate, actually. We've got some uh, interesting things going on. What I think about most of these 3D model um, generators right now is that they're, they're just creating some kind of kooky stuff. Like, it's not necessarily accurate to what I asked for, but it's interesting. Like, it's kind of fun. It's like... A, I feel like these creatures have come out of some like Chernobyl event. <laughs> They've been radi irradiated. Um, but I will say I'm pretty impressed with the texture generation. Like it, they seem crawfish-like or crayfish-like. Um, the it was successful in creating the bright orange claws. It did not create the bright orange tail, however. But in terms of this feeling crawfish like it does feel like a crawfish so or a crayfish i'm going to call that a, a pretty good win uh, if i were to actually use this for a project i think i'd have to do a lot of work on this model to make it useful but i'm going to go ahead and download this one so that i can do a side-by-side -side comparison later on and i'm going to download the fbx all right so let's move on to our next one we're going to do a colorful pink sea slug with many appendages, and we'll generate that. So it's completed our sea slug generation, and if you know anything about sea slugs or nudibranchs, they are the strangest, weirdest little creatures that have the most uh, fun appendages, and I really am digging what has come out of this, I have to say. <laughs> I will actually use this in a project. Uh, I'm working on a project that is about sort of a, a little bit of speculative biology and things like that. So I will actually use some of these in this project. Uh, of the group of these, I think that this one actually feels the most nudibranch-like. It has sort of the tail and some weird appendages in the front. Not any specific nudibranch, but um, I'm going to refine this one. So the refined version is complete now. Let's take a take a gander at that some really nice um some really nice textures i think i would probably if i were to use this one actually in my project i think i would come in to the material and do just a little bit more refinement around here there's obviously some hard edges which wouldn't exist on this kind of creature um, it's definitely not a nudibranch uh, or a sea slug so let's move on to the next one We'll do uh, a beautiful yellow seahorse with white, thin-lined patterns. 
these look very seahorse like let us take a look at some of these um, so that actually looks incredibly accurate it looks like a seahorse um, different colors variations each model looks almost the same I'm looking at the eyes and the nose and all of that and I'm thinking that like this one looks like it's gone a little bit off the deep end and got some weird things going on. I think of the few that it made, this first one to me looks the most, this first one and the second one. But I think the first one, because of the eye placement, looks the most accurately like a seahorse. So I am going to go ahead and select this one to refine. Okay, so we've got our seahorse refinement complete. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, its eyes are reasonably placed. I think particularly on this one side, the eye looks very reasonably placed. Better than I expected. There are obviously some flaws. It doesn't look exactly like a seahorse, but for generating something from a text prompt, I'm uh, really happy with the fact that it does look like a seahorse. Uh, and it's something that I feel like if I wanted to put a little more work into it, I could actually use uh, for a project. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one. And now we'll switch over to Luma Labs and see what we get. So we're in Luma Labs Genie, and I'm going to go ahead and go in the same order here. We'll start with our crayfish. And so we have each of these kind of work the same way. Like this one pops up your four previews, and then you choose the one that you want to work with further. And just off the bat, I will say I'm already giving the win to Meshi because none of these look like a crayfish. Well, the only one of these actually looks like a crayfish. But let's take a look at some of these just to, just for fun. Uh, <laughs> so if my goal was to create outlandish, strange characters that are kind of based on reality, I would totally give it to this one. Um, and... To be honest, for my own uses right now, for creating sort of like strange sea creatures, I'm really happy with these. And I will probably come back and use some of these in a project. This one obviously looks the most sort of crayfish-like. And I'm going to go ahead and make the high-res version of this one. Uh, now, I will say right off the bat that the Luma Labs Genie refinement tools take quite a bit longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit make high res and it's going to do this and then I'm going to leave and come back um, to my imagine section and go go ahead with the next the next object and then I'll show you how we get to those refined versions once those are finished so let's move on with our sea slug and see what we get it feels a little bit like gambling I asked for lots of appendages and I think this one is delivering on that for sure. Um, but again, I feel like the other one did a better job. Like this one sort of feels a little more like an actual sea slug or a nudibranch than the others did. These have a feel of something else entirely. And so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and select this one so we have a more fair comparison. Uh, and I'll use this for my high res version and let's go ahead and move into our final of the three our seahorse and this one actually did a pretty decent job of generating something that feels like a seahorse as well they're not too outlandish um, just taking a look at these, this one might be the most successful in terms of it actually feeling like a seahorse. And so I'm going to go ahead and refine this one or make the high res version. So Luma Labs, the way it works is it sort of keeps all of your previous creations in here um, and you can go back to them at any time through this creations window. And you can see it's still generating my high res version. So it's at 20% here and 5% here. And this one's still queued. And so it's going to take a little bit of time uh, before this is ready. And so the Luma Labs Genie has finished generating the high resolution models. And let's take a look at them.
So the preview here gives you the ability to roll around the model, but it doesn't really let you see the bottom surface, so I can't answer too much right now. But on first glance, I can say I really love the material quality. Like it feels even, it's a little softer, but it, it feels like it actually is uh, creating a nice material. The model's got some problems uh, in terms of like pieces missing. There are, aren't any eyes or anything like that on the creature, no antenna. Uh, but if what you needed is like a rough idea of a crayfish to use for something, maybe that would work for you. Um, it also did not do a great job in terms of the colors that I requested. I asked for a blue, a blue body and red claws and a red tail, and it completely failed on that. Now let's take a look at the pink sea slug that it generated. And right off the bat, I can say I am really very happy with the way this looks. Uh, the texture quality has this, I mean, it feels like it's been painted. It feels very sort of naturalistic. Um, the transitions from above and below look nice. Sea slugs don't have giant mouths, but sometimes they do have things that look like mouths. So, I mean, if I didn't know that this wasn't a real creature, I would almost believe that it was based on something in reality. Um, because it does have sort of the same appearance as many of the sea slugs that I've seen out there. I'm going to go ahead and download this one as well. And last but not least, let's take a look at our seahorse. Uh, the seahorse looks pretty nice. The texture actually looks really good. Um, believable. I mean, without doing a side-by-side -side comparison of an actual seahorse or looking for any particular species or anything like that, this looks like a seahorse. So now I'm going to open each one of these up in Cinema 4D. We're going to do a nice little lighting set situation and render each one. And then I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison showing the quality of the model, the quality of the textures. And I'll also talk about how much time it took for each one of these to be generated. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D for our side-by-side -side comparison. So I've got both of the models stacked up against each other. On the left, we see the meshy generated uh, crayfish. On the right, the Luma Labs Genie crayfish. And so just in general, the scale comes in pretty close to the same. I've scaled these up a little bit um, and manipulated them just to make them look cool. But uh, in general, they kind of come in the same way. Um, so I am going to do a quick uh, look at their polygonal structure. So you can see the polygon structure is pretty much the same. I feel like the Luma Labs gives a little bit more detail around smaller areas or, you know, the, the polygon structure gets a little smaller around those areas. And the uh, meshy tends to be more uniform across the board. In terms of uh, materials, they come in just about the same. It's like an atlas material map. And uh, it comes in pretty easily if you just open up the FBX file. Uh, in terms of render quality, here's a, here's a render of each one. Um, so I think you can clearly see, even while it's going, that the, the meshy materials come in a little bit sharper. Um, of course, I selected the realistic choice uh, when I was creating my meshy material uh, models. And the Luma Labs materials appear feel more like airbrushed, soft, but also a little bit more uniform and a little bit more well considered. Uh, like the tips of the feet are all the same and all of that. Although Meshy did a better job doing what I actually asked it to, creating uh, orange claws and a blue body not the orange tail, and the Luma Labs uh, created orange legs, but blue claws and a blue tail, so a little bit of variation there. Overall, I'm going to say accuracy, meshy wins, and texture map quality, meshy wins. Let's look at the sea slug. So again, uh, sea slug comes in two completely different looking models, but both wonderful little creatures that I absolutely love. I think of all the models I generated, these are my favorite. Um, the Again, the polygonal structure comes in pretty much the same. You can actually see, though, in the Luma Labs, it has a little bit more of a, sort of a flow that makes sense around the detailed areas. And it actually has a little bit more kind of refined detail than the meshy model does. Um, but I really like them both. Uh, in terms of accuracy for this one, and here, here's a... 
So here's a quick uh, render just so you can see the difference between the two and the texture maps. Uh, in terms of texture maps for this particular set of models, like I think that the Meshi model has some really interesting uh, details and a weird sort of textures. It would need a little bit more work in painting. Um, whereas I feel like the Luma Labs actually comes in more realistic for this one. Uh, the, I love the patterning on the back that it created, and I love the sort of white tips on the appendages. The underbelly actually looks pretty good um, on the Luma Labs, Luma Labs model um, versus the Meshi feels a little bit weird, like it didn't quite know what to do in certain areas. Uh, but in both cases, they do feel pretty uniform, and uh, I think in on this model, it worked out really well in both cases. Um, so, in terms of like, in terms of accuracy, I, I think I'm actually going to give it to the Luma Labs model, and I think it feels more sea slug like. Um, and I'm actually going to give the texture map to the Luma Labs in this one as well. And last but not least, let's take a look at the seahorse um, seahorse model from each one. Uh, again, we'll take a look at the polygonal structure. So you can see right off the bat that the Luma Labs. Uh, polygonal structure gets really tight and and uh, dense around these detail areas where the meshy polygonal structure is more sort of uniform overall. However, I feel like the in this case the texture actually comes out much nicer on the meshy seahorse and let's do a quick render so we can compare the two. I think where meshy really kind of wins out in this one is it it is basing it's creating a, a material that actually looks like a seahorse and has these nice patterns. I love the like little fin patterns back here. Um, but the eye is more accurate on the meshy one. Um, feels, it feels like more like a giraffe seahorse. So between the two, I'm going to give the mesh quality to the Luma Labs, but I'm also I'm going to give the material texture map to uh, meshy AI. I wanted to spend some time talking about the pricing of these tools as well. And so I've got the Meshi AI pricing sheet pulled up here. So you can see that the free account is great. It gives you 200 credits per month. Um, in my experience, 200 credits lets you make like two to three models and you know refinement and download and all of that stuff after generating them, maybe four. And it limits the ability to do things like purchase credits and such. If you wanted to purchase a pro account, its um, monthly cost is $16. If you buy a year's worth, if you switch it to monthly, it's actually $20 a month. And that gives you a thousand credits you know, with some extra queue service and all of that. And then they have the 48 max, uh, which gives you 4,000 credits a month. But the nice thing is if you buy the pro account, um, you can actually add as many credits as you want to as you go. So that's a feature that doesn't exist in the free version. If you decide you'd like to purchase a membership to Meshi, I would be very appreciative if you'd use my promo code, so thank you. Luma Labs Genie, on the other hand, at the time of the recording of this video, is completely free. So everything I've done in here, um, I didn't spend a, a nickel on. Um, it was all done free of charge. And so it seems to be a really cool company. Um, they've got some, if you go out to their main website, uh, it's a beautiful website, first of all, uh, and they're working on some really interesting things. So I highly recommend just checking them out and. Uh, getting a feel for what they're doing. For a final summary, let's take a look at how these really stacked up against each other. In terms of accuracy, I think Meshi is really winning out. Um, the I'm thinking about the quality of the model itself and does it look like the creature that I asked it to make uh, because these were all based on real creatures that exist in nature. And in terms of the seahorse and the crayfish, I think uh, Meshi actually did a better job than Luma Labs. But when it came to the nudibranch, the sea slug, um, Luma Labs GD did a much better job. So maybe it has a, a better sort of approach when it comes to things that feel a little bit more weird or fantastical. Um, and that's why I think for imagination, uh, I'm going to give it to Luma Labs Genie as well, because the creatures that it comes up with tend to be less accurate and more sort of imaginative, where the creatures that Meshi comes up with tend to be more accurate. So Speed, uh, Meshi is winning hands down. On average, it takes Meshi a little bit longer to generate the four sort of preview versions. It's about 10 seconds versus Luma Labs, maybe three or four seconds. But when it comes to generating the refined version, Meshi only takes about two, two and a half minutes, 
where Luma Labs takes more like 10 minutes, at least right now. Mesh quality, uh, I'm looking really at the mesh density and overall variations, and I feel like they're kind of tied. I think Luma Labs maybe have a little bit of an edge on there, but uh, overall the, the mesh quality is pretty similar uh, between the two. And texture quality, I feel like uh, it really depends on the type of model that you're creating. For the ones that I created today, I think two of them, the crawfish and the seahorse, had more, much more accurate quality textures on them than the Luma Labs. Luma Labs, however, does a much better job wrapping the texture around the model in a way that's even and seems like it's very naturalistic, which is why I think it does a good job with things like a nudibranch. Uh, the textures in Luma Labs tend to be a little bit much more soft and sort of airbrushed on painted on versus the meshy materials, which seem to be a little bit more based on reality, at least in the case of the models that I tried. And finally, we'll look at pricing and absolutely Luma Labs Genie, at least at the time of the recording of this video, has Meshi beat hands down because Luma Labs is free and Meshi has a price structure that could be prohibitive for some artists. I really expected to see one of these tools stand out a lot against the other one, but as it turns out, they're kind of at a tie. I think Meshi is better at doing things that are more realistic and typical, where the Luma Labs Genie is, I think, better at doing things that are more whimsical and sort of fantastical. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, you just have to choose the right tool for what you're going for. Thank you so much for watching this video comparison. I hope it's been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.